Mr. Jabir, for uh, speaking to us. This is the third of our um, uh, videos, and this is a following on from the top tips to GPs uh, about what GPs are referring to you that perhaps they don't need to refer. So perhaps we could start off with dry eyes. Well, I wouldn't refer really dry eyes. I mean, you can deal with them, and I suggest really you liaise with the community pharmacist to have a package of uh, various types of drops. Uh, advise the patients to take them and then to maybe have a tick sheet or which one is more uh, you know comfortable and uh, they like it and then prescribe that because there are so many formulas in the market and every day we get two or three new ones so it's just a big uh, issue I think for us as well to use mm. preservative or not and there are various types of dry eyes uh, unless of course the dry eyes cause problems or corneal problems or very severe then we are happy uh, of course, to, to see them if they get referred. So, do some pharmacies offer the service of trying the variety? I don't know really. We've tried it a few years ago to have a package of all the dry eye mm. uh, remedies, and then they give it to each patient, and the patients uh, select which one they feel more comfortable so with. It's simply patient preference. It is patient preference, unfortunately. Okay. And what I about can't drops advise. And well, drops during the day, four or five times a day, and ointments at night, because most dry eyes are worst in the morning. And so people have to lubricate the eyes at night. And this is a very simple, I think you can deal with it. Uh, other problems which could be associated with dry eyes is blepharitis. Mm. Again, blepharitis is a problem uh, with, with crusty mm. lashes and a bit of like dandruff mm. around the lashes. Mm. Then you use dry eye uh, medications. At the same time, you do what we call lid hygiene. Mm. It's a bit offensive to patients, but you can give them a leaflet maybe how to mm. clean the lashes mm. using like a cup of uh, baby shampoo diluted and then with cotton wool to clean the lashes and that will uh, will help really mm. removal mm. of this the crust from the lashes mm. and uh, mm. and more comfortable eyes after that. Mm. Yes. So I think this, this can be dealt with in primary care. And what about when we refer conjunctivitis to you? What sort of ones would you like to see? I think if it is conjunctivitis, there are, of course, three broad types, bacterial, uh, chlamydial, and viral. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can include uh, allergic conjunctivitis as mm -hmm. well. I think allergic and viral, probably, yeah, I'm happy for you to treat them if you know how to exclude and how to diagnose them. So we recognize a viral conjunctivitis because it's more of a watery discharge. More of a watery discharge, less than sticky, usually following upper respiratory infection. And if you stain the cornea, there is a little bit of punctate staining or little spots around. So that maybe you would think of adenoviral. Mm -hmm. Well, we, there's no treatment for it anyway. Guidelines so, are suggesting that we manage most conjunctivitis conservatively. Indeed. That's yes. right. And even bacterial, I mean, you can start them with simple antibiotics for a week or so. Usually, most cases they recover. If not, then swap them and refer them to us. Mm. And what about the floaters, uh, the chronic floaters? Chronic floaters for weeks and months and uh, without any association with flashes of light, usually 99% are posterior vitreous detachment. Mm. They don't need referral. Patients need to be reassured. Mm. However, if they are associated with the flashes of light, mm. they are acute, then there is a possibility maybe one in a hundred of retinal holes, which could lead to retinal detachment, then they need to be referred. Mm -hmm. How to differentiate the two? Then the chronicity is one clue. The other one, maybe have an ophthalmoscope and look at the back of the eye. Mm -hmm. You see a little ring, a little floater in the, and no blood or no holes. Mm -hmm. That needs a sophisticated, really, knowledge of ophthalmology. How would you, re you personally reassure someone who has chronic floaters? I would say this is quite common. I have it myself. Mm -hmm in my right eye and I wouldn't worry about it but mm. come back to us if it is the floaters become bigger if it is associated with the flashes and if the floaters are sudden like a shower of black dots yes. shower of flies or a gray wavy curtain coming after the floaters yeah. then these are the warning signs of detachment uh, and what about watery eyes Again, watery eyes could be simply dry eyes. Mm. Paradoxically, they can be watery. So start them, especially in older age groups, on artificial teardrops. If that corrects it, that's fine. If not, then suspect a blockage of the tear passages. If that's the case, then I would suggest referring them to ENT colleagues mm. who will probably investigate them rather than to us, and then we refer them to ENT mm. colleagues. Are there any specific pointers that might help us to know they need to go to ENT first? 
Well, if they have like uh, a history of dacryocystitis, for example, mm -hmm. a big cyst in the corner of the eye which settles with antibiotics and then followed, following that uh, watery eye, then that's definitely a tear passage problem. Otherwise, you need really to flush mm -hmm. with water the tear passages mm -hmm. to diagnose it. And again, you'd be happy for us to use the choosing book advice and guidance Indeed. more. Uh, and we'd get an answer within 24 hours. I hope so. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay.